Psalms chapter 19 To the chief musician, a psalm of David, again a hymn. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Run that back to Romans 1.16, and it's the God the Creator. It was not a big bang. Day unto day other speech. Days speak unto you. They speak the glory of God. And night unto night show us knowledge. The Bible says that even in the creation we can learn of God. Every day is to speak to you about what God has done, what God is doing, and into the night. Knowledge. You're to learn every day of God. The Bible speaks, you're to speak to the animals. You are to read your Bible. You're to pray to God. You're to look. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. It's a global, worldwide thing that the stars will speak, that the sun will speak, that the moon will speak. Animals will speak. The creation will speak to man. Whether you live in a tropical heat or you live in the ice caps of Antarctica or, or, or uh, Alaska. When you're in Alaska, you can see something that, that the rest of the country can't see. There are all of our hours. And you can look up at that and say, hey, that's something that God has done. And if you're in a, in a Hawaii, the island nation there uh, of the Lord of uh, uh, America, and you can see those volcanoes, that's an act of God. And when you along the Mississippi River, you, you're watching that, you watch the water flow and the, the fish and the wildlife and all that along the river, that tells you about God. Their line is going out through all the earth, and a line here is instruction from the creation. The creation act of God goes out through all the world and tells you. Only a man can be educated to be an atheist. A man who's in the jungle, of, in the, the darkest jungles of Africa, or in a desert, in the, in the hottest desert in the world, wherever he is, without education, he'll look up to the skies and say, there's a God. Now, some people will go and worship false gods and turn it into falseness. And that's against God. And their words to the end of the world. And these words and these lines are not man. They are the creation. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun. Now a tabernacle for the sun is an interesting word here. When you look at the tabernacle that, was, that Moses built. And that Israel carried. A tabernacle is something that is movable. And the sun moves from east to west. The sun does not just stay and stay there all the time. Now, I believe, according to the Bible, that, that I don't care what they say. I think they're wrong. I think the sun revolves around the earth, according to what the scriptures say. Because if they say, now, maybe, maybe moving of the sun here, maybe because the sun turns on its axis, but man don't know nothing. God does. He's the one that created it. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm not saying that's pure, you know, doctrine that the sun goes around the earth. Or earth. That's, listen, there's other things to be doctrine and through. Which is the sun as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices at the strong man to run away. The sun is likened to two things. As that bridegroom comes out of his chamber and he sees that there's his bride. And he's going to run to her. He's going to go to her. And he's going to encap and take her. That's the son. As a strong man that runs a race, he sees that, that goal up there. He's running. He's running. The son won't stop. The Bible says that one day the sun won't, won't be shining. It doesn't say it's not going to be there. It's just going to say it's going to go out. And to the heavens and earth be dissolved. His, the sun, going forth is from the end of the earth, east to west, end of heaven, east to west. And his circuit, 
the path. The, the, it said over there in First Samuel that uh, Samuel had a circuit. He went from here to here and here. The, uh, the, the early in America, you had circuit riders. Well, the sun has a position that he has to be at certain parts of the day. And only men in America would change it by setting your clocks back. You didn't change nothing. That sun goes around just as much as, as, as you change the clocks ahead one hour, just as much as you set the clocks back one hour. That sun is a stew spot, and it's still, it's still going like it is. It's still set like it is for God, and the plan that God has it. And around our months of September, that sun takes a weird little spot. And that's the time of the tabernacles. That's the time of the month when all, most of the majority of the holidays, of, or the celebration days, not a holiday, uh, that's mankind, America, uh, that all the celebrations of Israel were during that time, and probably the time when Jesus was born. So, God has set the Son to do certain things. His circuits unto the end of the earth. Uh, let, me, let me try it again. And his circuits unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. You get in those, in those rays, what are you going to hide? You can hide in a shade. The law, now we're going for a paragraph. We talked about the creation. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The law told you what to do to get right and how to keep your soul from going to hell. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Everything he done in Egypt, everything he done in the wilderness, everything he done for David, making wise the simple. So you, if you're simple, you want to be wise, you go to school. No. You get in the law of the Lord and you get in the testimony of the Lord. You don't have testimony times in church anymore. Very few. The statutes of the Lord are right. Unless you're in an American courtroom. Unless you're in an American school building. Rejoicing the heart. You know, you're doing what you you're doing what God wants you to do is pleasing. It's never a hard burden. If you really love the Lord, the Bible says in Corinthians, you give cheerfully and not grudgingly. You would say, "Hey, this is the Lord's the ten. This is the Lord's ten. This is the Lord's." Lord, you've blessed my house so much. I'm going to give you more. It's never a burden to serve the Lord. The commandment of the Lord is pure, without man touching it. Moses touched it and he broke it. And when God wrote upon it the second time, it was put into the ark. <laughs> Don't let anybody touch it this time. Enlightening, his, enlightening the eyes. Well, that's interesting. And the Bible speaks of Paul writes about the law and that was a schoolmaster to show you Christ, to show you the Messiah, to show you that, you know what, you can't do it. That entire law was to show you're a sinner. You're to do what God told you to do and wait for the Messiah to come and shed his blood. The fear of the Lord is clean, Job 28, 28. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You want to be clean? You fear the Lord. What, what do you do when you fear the Lord? You'll do exactly what he tells you to do. I'm reading a story about John Bunyan, and I'm reading through how he did these things before he got saved. And you say, hey, it, what, what, what's going on here? He did exactly what the Lord did to him, and as a result of, of doing what God told him to do, he became clean, he became born again. And he had a love for the brethren. He, had to, for the, he wanted the brethren to do right, and he got upset like me when they do wrong. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. What is that? That's the five books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Leviticus. Two. We got Leviticus. More to be desired are they than gold. 
Uh oh, Solomon. You know, David gathered gold for the for the temple. Solomon gathered gold for himself. And it said at one time his gold was six hundred and sixty six. And he built six steps to his throne. Not pretty good numbers. Yea, then much fine gold. You know where the fine gold David went? It went to the temple. You know where the fine gold went of, of Israel in, in, before they started their journey? It went into the, the furniture of the ark, into the table, into the candlestick, into the, uh, the prayer altar, the incense altar. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Now that was a natural sweetener. You, I mean, I don't, I don't know if they had coffee or whatever. But they would use honey to sweeten the food. They would dip, dip things into honey. There was one time Jonathan's out there in a battle. And the battle is over. He's walking through the woods. He sees honey dripping. He takes the end of his rod. And he picks some up and he's tasting it. It's a, it's a sugar su substitute of God. Moreover, by them, statutes, the judgments, all that we read, is thy servant warned. Hmm. You know what that verse is saying? You know what the hard part of that verse is saying? Uh, uh, the servant David, I'll, I'll tell you about David first. David, you knew it was wrong to commit adultery and murder. You were warned. Don't you dare come to me and say it was wrong that four of your children died. You knew the law. Matter of fact, you quoted the law to Nathan or Gad. I forget which one it was. I said, Thou art the man. David just got finished saying four sheep for. Yeah, you knew the law, David. And don't you dare save the law, stand before God at the judgment, and say, I didn't know. You could have known. Or I didn't have a Bible. Neither did Abimelech in Egypt, but he knew it was wrong to commit adultery. And he pleaded his case with God and said, God, I did not know. And God said, I know. You're innocent. You know what that shows you? Abimelech and God talking. There's going to be some people at the great white throne judgment are going to say, God, I... And God's going to say, yep, you are innocent. Hold on, let's check the book. Your name's in the book. Come on. Abimelech did what his conscience. Any Jew who, who listen, forget the New Testament. Any Jew today who's involved in the, in the Old Testament as they go to synagogue and, they, and they're taught and read what it says, they know they've been warned. There's a thing that when you read your Bible, not every book, Every chapter points you to Jesus Christ, their Messiah. If you get finished reading the chapter and you can't find Jesus Christ, you need to go back and pray and you need to go find him because he's there. And that's the warning for David in the Old Testament. Think about what the New Testament speaks about. Paul and John and them are always telling us what we're not to do. And in keeping of them, there is a great reward. Glory. The earth that God promised him. Listen, the Jew's not going to get crowns. He's going to get the earth, the new earth, without the curse, without Satan. You know, that'd be a wonderful thing. It says in the millennium, and since I love tomatoes, that they're going to plant tomato seeds, and they're going to be his wife right behind him, his children collecting the tomatoes as he puts the seeds in the ground. Amen. Glory to God. Maybe that's what kind of earth is going to be. Absolutely no drought. Can you imagine a earth where wheat grows and there's no chaff? Can you picture an ear of American corn growing without no the green part and no cob? Just, well, I don't know how. But everything without the curse. You know what happens when you don't have the curse on this earth no more? And you're in New Jerusalem and you're in New Earth and the New Heavens? You need to get a new body. it blow your eyeballs out. Who can understand his errors? <laughs> Isn't that funny? If God erred, if God had made an error, 
Who would understand it? What if God, oh, it's supposed to be H1O. I'm oh, sorry. Who would know it? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Uh-oh. And that's where I tell you, you know, listen, you are to ask God every once in a while when you're by yourself, say, God, is there anything unclean in my life that you can see right now that I need to put under the blood? Maybe it passed you up. Maybe you did it without knowing it. Maybe you, oh, I'll, I'll cleanse it later and forgot. And it says false. Secret. Not the presumption of sins that we're going to read about right now. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. That sins that premeditated. You want to do it. David knew exactly what he was going to do when Bathsheba showed up. Now, he may not have knew about Uriah. He didn't plan on her getting pregnant. Maybe he should have. Let them not have dominion over me. You're not to let have sin dominion over you. Do not, and Paul writes this. We are sinners, yes. That's the flesh. But don't give in to it and don't crave into it and don't satisfy the earth. Don't just do it like the world says. Say no to sin. But you're going to. Let it be an accidental. Let it be a, a secret that you didn't know you were going to do. Then shall I be upright. And I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Now, I don't know what that great transgression is. Let the words of my mouth, David. And the meditation, the prayer of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And that closes out that prayer and that hymn. O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul.